a woman is diagnosed with early stage breast cancer and receives definitive therapy for early stage breast cancer. So she has surgery, radiation therapy, perhaps chemotherapy, adjuvant endocrine therapy, and then at some point down the road, the cancer comes back. The diagnosis can be very scary for, for many women who have children, young children, adolescent children, women who are caring for their elderly family members. People have medical questions of how they're going to deal with this, what it means, um, what it means for their, for their health, what it means for their mortality. What was running through my head was my first diagnosis was the unknown and now the second was the known but still it was it, it it's it's the known i think sometimes can be worse than the unknown HR-positive breast cancer or hormone receptor-positive breast cancer refers to all breast cancers that are either estrogen receptor positive or progesterone receptor positive or have both. And these are the majority of all breast cancers. We also know that older women are more likely to have hormone receptor positive tumors. If you are diagnosed over the age of 70, something like 90% of the cancers are ER positive. Late fall into winter of 2015, I wasn't feeling well. So I just called Dr. Burstein one day and said, hey, I'm not feeling great. Um, I've, I've already gone down some paths with my primary. I'm coming up empty handed. I'm just throwing it out. You know, is there anything I need to do with you? When you meet a woman who there is expectation that she's had a recurrence of the breast cancer, the first thing we try and do is get a biopsy because it allows us to do a couple things. One is you can talk to the patient and say with authority, I know what this is and I know what it isn't. The other is that it allows you to do a reinterrogation of the biomarkers that we often lean on, ER, PR, and HER2, and increasingly now, genomic assays. When we think about precision medicine, it really is all about figuring out what are the right subgroups. So we, we've been doing some sort of precision medicine for a long time in breast cancer, because when we classify a breast cancer as ER positive, or HER2 positive, or triple negative, we've now separated breast cancer into three subgroups. And now what we're talking about is within each of those groups, well, maybe there are additional subdivisions based on the genetics or based on some other molecular markers. And we can tailor our therapies accordingly to those individual subgroups. And so really what we're doing for every single one of these patients is figuring out, identifying, and then exploiting the specific Achilles heel in that person's tumor. So step one, is a biopsy to establish the diagnosis. And of course, step two, if it hasn't been done, are staging scans to figure out where the cancer looks to be at baseline. Once you have that information, you begin a conversation with the patient about what we can and cannot do and what some of the tools that we have are for treating advanced hormone receptor positive breast cancer. A day before my 47th birthday, I had found out I had um, advanced uh, breast cancer. I had a hard time um, actually speaking without breaking down. I would see somebody in the supermarket or TJ Maxx and they'd be like, Kelly, and I just, I just cracked. If there's ambiguity about the menopausal status, we always err on the side of suppressing ovarian function because we're going to be using drugs whose track record is really only known in the setting of postmenopausal endocrine function. I often liken this to a fishing expedition. As long as you're catching fish and reeling things in, you just are going to keep going with whatever that is that you began with until the fish stop biting. And for, of course, hormone receptor positive breast cancer, that usually means starting with a hormonal treatment, getting the patient going on that regimen, seeing how they tolerate the regimen, getting scans or other evaluations serially over time, and as long as things are working and as long as the patient's tolerating the medicine, continuing on. Once I got a hold of it and got my head around it, I, was, um, I got back to work, working out, and got back to my, my rich life. There's such a, a um, emotional side to this journey that I didn't have back in 2002. Because that was one stop, get it done. Emotionally, I've got to 
be okay with this for the duration of my life. And I'm really hoping my life is going to be a very long life. On average, women with ER positive metastatic breast cancer will get not just hormone treatment for several years, but will also get five or six lines of chemotherapy over the course of their illness of their advanced breast cancer. In the next episode, the Dana-Farber team discusses ways to individualize treatment for patients with HR-positive metastatic breast cancer. <laughs>